Foreign Affairs Minister Nanaia Mahuta says she's not sure if New Zealand has offended China, but a statement from the emerging superpower about removing the eyes of those who interfere with its business is strongly worded. The Five Eyes Intelligence Grouping, which includes, includes New Zealand, Australia, Britain, the United States and Canada released a joint statement calling for China to immediately reinstate recently fired members of Hong Kong's legislature. It also said the new rules, uh, the changes, appear to be a concerted campaign to silence critical voices. A China foreign ministry spokesperson responded saying, quote, if it doesn't matter whether they have five eyes or ten, if they dare to damage China's sovereignty, security and development, they should be careful or their eyes will be plucked out. Nanaya Mahuta believes our relationship with China is maturing and that means we can talk about what we agree on and what we don't. It is strongly worded and uh, those are China's words, not New Zealand's. New Zealand's words are advocating for the, uh, the values and principles that we believe will create greater stability and peace, uh, inclusion, upholding uh, democratic principles that we know will actually help to strengthen our Pacific region, the Indo-Pacific region, and as we relate to the rest of the world. Why do you think they came back with such strong language? You'll have to ask them. Uh, what I do know is that uh, New Zealand, uh, when it advocated uh, uh, on Hong Kong earlier this year around the UN. It was absolutely uh, clear about our concern for the actions China were taking. And then um, its changeover of government when I came in, I expressed a early concern and then made a decision if we were going to reflect on the many countries that expressed concern around Hong Kong, then it made sense to join the Five Eyes Statement. So is it a threat... That statement? Uh, you know, words, w words can be interpreted in many ways. What I would hope for New Zealand uh, and, um, and well, China... How do you that, in, how do you interpret, them, interpret those words, Minister? Well, actions should follow words, and, and I'm not entirely sure that they have for New Zealand because New Zealand enjoys a respectful relationship with China and it is maturing. And a mature relationship enables us to uh, understand what we, what, what we are very clear about in terms of values and principles. New Zealand's been very consistent on that front. Minister, are the words that China have used here in the statement that it's made, is it a threat? I can't assess that. What I can, what I can say in terms of the words that New Zealand have expressed in relation to Hong Kong is that we will uphold the values and principles that we believe will build uh, stability, peace, prosperity, inclusion. Uh, and we, we've got 4,000 New Zealanders in Hong Kong, uh, so it's in our interest to ensure that as we message out the things we stand for, uh, that it's very clearly understood. And our mature relationship with, with China uh, would enable uh, China not to be offended but actually um, try and understand what we are trying to uh, promote for the benefit of our Pacific region, Indo-Pacific, and as we relate to the rest of the world. Have we offended China, do you think? I'm not sure. Have you spoken to them about it? Not yet. And when do you intend to do that? I think that's on the agenda of the many calls that I've been um, called, uh, that I've been um, putting into my agenda. I intend to. I intend to. That's probably what you would like to know. Diplomacy is about a back and forth and an exchange of words, not just one-sided. You've talked about what New Zealand wants to achieve and New Zealand's words. But in diplomacy, as you would know, every word is chosen so carefully. You are choosing your words very carefully in talking to me. So China has chosen its words to us carefully as well. And it looks like very strong language. So, is it your feeling that we have offended China? I'll wait uh, until I actually have my conversation with my counterpart and continue to express in a very consistent way the, con the concerns that we've reflected in relation to Hong Kong. I'm not going to read anything more into it until I've had that conversation. What have your other Five Eyes partners said to you about this? 
Uh, we, we've made an agreement uh, to uh, uh, join the, uh, towards the joint statement. We haven't had a direct conversation since we've put the statement out. Right, so you've had no communication with the rest of commu- our Five Eyes partners since this. I had, I had communications prior, not since. So what are, your, what are New Zealand's bottom lines with China? In terms oh, no, of, I think I, I think I may not have clearly expressed uh, uh, what what I believe the relationship with China looks like. There are many things that we can agree with China on. Take, for example, climate change and the progress they've made in our common objectives. There, it's a maturing relationship, as you know. We renewed the free trade agreement uh, with China, so we had the uh, free trade up. Uh, agreement upgrade. Uh, So there are many opportunities to continue to work with China on. However, when it comes to values and principles that define who New Zealand is and what we advocate in terms of peace and stability at a regional level and as we relate to the rest of the world, we are very consistent in in advocating uh, on those fronts. Minister, I'm really specifically referring to the joint statement that has been put out in relation to the sackings of um, the members of the Legislative Council in Hong Kong. So what are your expectations, what are your bottom lines with China in respect to this particular incident with the sackings and, um, well, the the silencing of those pro-democracy voices? So that they would uh, uh, actually... Uh, reconsider um, the that that action, but importantly, you know, the agreement uh, with uh, Hong Kong moving to China from the UK is that there would be a high level of autonomy, and and that would enable uh, freedom of speech. So, is like it a bottom reflect, line, Minister? I'd, I'd that like they, them to ref, I'd like them to reflect uh, on the decisions that prevent uh, that approach. Reflect or reinstate? Because the wording of the statement says reinstate immediately. So is that a bottom line for you? Do you want China? Are you telling China that you'd like to see them give give these people their positions back? The, the joint statement is a shared statement with agreed outcomes. So what if those things don't happen? Well, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. We're currently in the moment, aren't we? But you must have some idea about what your next move is. And we'll just see what happens from here. So have you not discussed next moves? Well, that's, we, we've only just put the statement out. I'm not going to be pressed into a next move prior to considering what, uh, what will result from the joint statement. Minister, in terms of the Five Eyes partnership, I mean, we can assume that the Five Eyes partners are gathering intelligence on China. Do you assume that China is gathering intelligence on New Zealand? I assume that uh, with diplomatic posts all over the world, several embassies are gathering all sorts of intelligence on, on, on countries. In what form do you think that takes, that oh. intelligence gathering by China? In all sorts of forms, by all by by many countries who have embassies and foreign posts uh, stationed around the world, like spying, you mean? Oh, look, I'm not going to be drawn into the to, to the uh, specifics of any um, any method of uh, gaining uh, intelligence. But as you have diplomatic posts stationed around the world, there will be all sorts of ways of gathering intelligence to compile information about how you engage with the country. What is important for New Zealand is that we have a respectful relationship with China and that, and, and I believe it's maturing, which enables us to express our concern in areas where we can't agree. And that's why New Zealand upholds its independent foreign policy stance and has good relationships that work for the benefit and interest of New Zealanders as best we can so that we're not compromising what we stand for as we engage with the rest of the world to deliver opportunity. And that was the Foreign Affairs Minister, Nanaya Mahuta.